Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for a special edition of the show. We're doing our Christmas episode right now. Um, so again, Psalm Select, uh, who I do buy a lot of wine from, um, I bought their actual Thanksgiving six pack. Uh, I haven't seen them advertise the Christmas six pack yet, uh, but I bought the Thanksgiving six pack and I decided to only use three wines for Thanksgiving and then use the other three for Christmas because you know what, these are, these are still good Christmas wines. Um, oops, excuse me. They gave me a little who's he, what's it here. Um, it's really basic information though. There's, um, I think there's a little more to the tasting notes. If you go back onto the site, uh, for all the wines, but I went ahead and looked everything up. Um, total cost of the six pack was $199 for the uh, six wines. And I didn't get my, um, my wine key to cut the foil, but uh, didn't need to because I was able to at least find a spot to put in there. So the first one we're going to do here is, is the, oh, I heard this like, I was like, what? Uh, is the Andre Clouet Champagne Grand Reserve, non-vintage. Now, uh, looking this wine up, it retails anywhere between $45 um, and 40, 40 to $45, depending on what part of the country you are getting it from. Um, so let's, anyway, uh, this champagne producer, I don't think it said when it was founded, but there's a, now this has been in the fridge for a while. It should not have popped like that, but I'm being distracted. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't see anything in there. Maybe the Psalm Select guys tell me when they were founded. No, it doesn't. Anyway, um, they have a 17th century village house built by an ancestor who acted as a printer for Louis XV's royal court at Versailles. So first off, before I get into any more about this. Is there anything on the back label that can tell me? No, it doesn't. It? Um, why am I using a regular wine glass? Well, one, because I got two regular wines, but two, um, to properly evaluate champagne or any type of sparkling wine, you really need a regular wine glass of some sort, something that's not a flute. Um, because the flute, all, the only reason you have a flute is to make the bubbles look pretty. Cause yeah, you, there's no bubbles now, right? The flute is designed so it keeps the bubbles going, but it's it's not a good glass for the aromatics and all that type of stuff, whereas this is a little bit better for the aromatics. Um, so when I drink sparkling wine, I will normally drink it out of here. Um, a lot of times with my specials, I will have the champagne flute just to have the final pour, but since um, it's only one of three wines, I didn't pull it out. Um, Anyway, so uh, Andre Clouet, they're in Bouzy, uh, which is an area that is actually uh, better well known for, uh, well, not better, but it's well known for growing really good Pinot Noir. Uh, and uh, they have uh, Grand Cru uh, vineyards in uh, Bouzy and Ambonnet. Um, <clears throat> the Grand Reserve Brut is 100% Grand Cru Estate Bottled Boozy Pinot Noir aged six years on yeast. Usually we say on lees, but on yeast. Uh, offers, well, I'm not going to go through the actual tasting notes. Um, and I want to say that Samsung gave us a little bit more information about this. Uh, they have uh, eight hectares in Boozy and Ambonet. 
uh, the current proprietor, Jean-Francois Clouet, puts his cuvées through long lees aging, infusing them with creamy complexity. Even the, quote, entry-level uh, brute is six years. Um, there's not much else. They don't really have a website, so I just have to rely on other people's uh, stuff to tell me anything about them. Um, and that's it. So let's check it out. Oh, yeah, I already talked about the price. So uh, right off the bat, you get the, 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 the bready, um, doughy uh, champagne aroma, but you also get like tons of peach. Yeah, and it's like, like a creamy peach, almost like a creamsicle. I did see the word strawberry in, in Tasty Notes, and maybe you get a little, if you put strawberries with it, it'd be fantastic. Um, I guess, you know, maybe a touch of strawberry. Be a creamsicle, peach, brioche. Yeah. Uh, those little, uh, um, it's a specific type of cookie. That, that um, like a tea cookie or whatever it is. Um, uh, some other like Italian cookies that, that, that I've had, not the Anazette, but like the S cookies. Yeah, so that type of bready um, bakery type of uh, baked bread type of thing, sourdough a little bit. Really nice aromatically. The champagne's good. I know it's forty to forty-five dollars, so it's not cheap stuff. It's really tasty. Um, everything I described in the nose is there on the palate. Even that touch of strawberry, but it was more in the retronasal, more when I was spitting the wine out, where it's just in my mouth. I was like, nah, no, oh, there's a strawberry. Um, yeah. Maybe a touch of raspberry to it. It's it's super tasty. Like a little cherry, like like cherry, like sour cherry candy. A little bit of that. I'm swallowing that. Of course, I'm going to pour the rest out. Um, really tasty. If you want to drop $45, bucks, $40 on, on a bottle of nice bubbles, that, that's a good one to That's a good one to splurge on. And it's probably, I think, my first time ever having Andre Clouet. All right. So, I'll have to open it. Move it off to the side, a little separation. Let's move on to wine number two. This is the St. Innocent Pinot Noir Willamette uh, Valley Appalachian. Uh, this is um, the Freedom Hill Vineyard. And um, so uh, we're talking American Pinot Noir. Uh, on the website, they say there's, uh, for this vintage, 2013, by the way, um, they say for this vintage, there's 1,176 cases produced, and it's a retail price of $42. Oh, why don't I don't pour it in there. All right, so <clears throat> Thanksgiving, we had a Pinot Noir Gamay combo, which I tell you, I drank that the day of Thanksgiving uh, watching uh, football. Actually, I was finishing watching the UT uh, Duke basketball game. That's awesome. I will be right back because I really need to wipe that up. So I'll tell you about the Duke game. Dude, that was an awesome game until UT lost it. So they, they had the game. They really did. And it went to overtime and they lost it. And then I was all set up to watch the... Um, UT Tech football game because the traditional Thanksgiving game 
was back to being on Fridays. So for a long time, the UT A&M game would be on, on Thanksgiving night. And then somewhere along the line, they decided to put it on Fridays. And then they, then they brought it back to Thursday nights. And then UT and A&M, well, A&M, you know, jetted the, uh, the conference and went to uh, the Southeast Conference. So that ended the um, rivalry. And uh, then UT played a couple different teams, and then they started playing. They played Tech this year. So, um, and it's on Friday instead. So that's all right. I mean, I get to watch it regardless. Well, actually, I was home to watch it, but <laughs> I didn't watch any of the game because I drank all three of the Psalm Select Thanksgiving wines that day on Friday. Though I heard it was a really good game until UT lost it. So they lost, they had two really great games that they lost at the very end. So that kind of sucked. Anyway, did I fill did I fill the time sufficiently enough while I cleaned all that mess? I hope so. Hopefully I didn't stop that recording. All right. <clears throat> it smelled really good. Let's do it again. I think that's the first time I've spilt a glass of wine on camera. I think ever in the three, this is episode 392. Almost did it again. All right. Take two on drinking the wine. I can tell you though, like I was trying to say that, um, Pinot Noir Gamay uh, combo. Uh, drinking it, just regular drinking it, was, again, fantastic. I, I was, of those three wines, that was my favorite wine. All right, so let's just get into this wine. Ugh. I hate having to clean up after a mess. So I try not to make any messes. All right. So it's got this um, kind of bitter coffee aroma to it. And I do associate that aroma with a lot of mostly California wines um, and Pinot Noirs and some other, some like other wines from California. I also get a lot of smoke out of it. A little smoked meat. Not like a Northern Rhone Syrah, but just like a touch of it. A little bit of uh, cinnamon. A touch of clove. A little bit of potpourri. So what I'm trying to say is I don't really get a lot of fruit on, on the nose. I mean, there might be some dried cherry into it. And that's really just because it's Pinot Noir. It should be cherry. I, I know what it is. So I'm kind of reaching for a fruit aroma that's supposed to be in the wine. Thankfully, that, that bitter coffee aroma is blown off. I really do I love the smell of regular coffee, but I don't like coffee as a flavor. So um, it usually turns me off when I get that in a wine. Well, that, because it's like weird, like I'll get the bitter coffee flavor or aroma. It's like I actually am drinking the coffee, whereas like you smell coffee brewing, it's a beautiful smell. I don't normally get that kind of smell in, in a wine. I usually get the, the taste of it in my nose. But it's blown off. It's actually more like a mocha. A little touch of chocolate in there. Touch of caramel. It's like really opening up. It's starting to become a more, for me personally, an aromatically pleasing wine. Oh, did I? Oh, yeah, I already talked about how much it was. Yeah, almost like one of those Brock's caramels. 
I have said before, caramel is not anything other than a town in California. It's caramel. I'm not trying to be like snooty and snobby. That's actually just the word. Because God knows I mispronounce a ton of stuff. Touch of dirt. Let's just drink the wine. On the palate, um, kind of pine needle-ish, kind of forest floor, foresty. Um, a touch of alcohol, too, which I wasn't really expecting. It's only 12%, but it feels more alcoholic than that. Um, I mean, not, it doesn't feel like 15% alcohol by any means, but you kind of felt a little, little warm. Kind of that pine air freshener type of um, more of an aroma. Uh, touch of cherry again. Um, touch of that bitter coffee on the palate. It's it's not a bad Pinot Noir, and, and this honestly is a Pinot Noir that a ton of people are going to love. Um, it has too much of that of of the flavors and aromas I'm not a fan of in wine. That I mean, I would drink it. I, I would probably enjoy it, especially with a bunch of good friends who are having it for Christmas dinner um, or any other holiday dinner. Um, you're pairing it with the right type of food, especially because it's it's a lot of Christmas spice and, and earthiness to it. It's not a fruit-driven wine. Um, I could see myself putting this in a, in a burgundy camp, but there's enough of a couple other things that make me want to say, oh, it's New World. And what happens is I get this confused thing where I'm like, it kind of tastes like California, but not. And that usually means it's Oregon. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's a good wine if you like this style of Pinot Noir. Um, I'm usually a super big fan of Willamette, specifically uh, Pinot Noirs, but... Just like Pinot Noirs in California, they can be a little hit and miss. They're usually more hit than miss in, in, in uh, Oregon and specifically Willamette, whereas in California it's more miss, miss than hit. But um, the aroma, I love the nose. I'm, I'm really liking the nose now. On the palate, it's it, again. I think it's. I think maybe once the wine kind of airs out and opens up, everything becomes better for me. But uh, definitely, there's a lot of people that like this style of wine, um, and it's forty two dollars. I think it's priced about what normally you know. It's about where other forty two dollar bottles of Pinot Noir from Oregon are priced, so it's priced I think appropriately. Um, I look forward to drinking this later. Whether I drink it tomorrow because I'm off tomorrow, or I guess I guess technically today, um, if I drink it, you know, on Thursday um, on my other day off, I don't know. I may hold on to it to drink it another time. Um, obviously, the champagne, which where did I put the? I brought the thing over here. Oh yeah. If you are gonna have sparkling wine, you got to get one of these types of caps. Uh, I like this one because it it really clamps on it. Um, there's a few other ones that you can twist and, but I like these that actually clamp on there. But when you take these off, you definitely have to be careful because, you know, after, you know, I don't know, have, spend a day or two or three, it can fly off. So you gotta be careful with them. Um, but I'm definitely drinking this over the next couple days just so that, you know, it doesn't go bad to go flat on me. But you'd be surprised how long that these make a sparkling wine last. I mean, I, I've, I've come back a week later and they were still pretty good. Um, but anyway, for the Pinot Noir, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to drinking it later. I think this is a wine that if I like drank it over the course of a couple hours, I would probably love it more and more and more because already the nose is getting better, the palate's getting better.
but there's still that new world flavor that I've yet to completely identify um, that is very prevalent in, in new world Pinot Noirs, even in Pinot Noirs that are more earthy than fruit forward, like this one um, from Oregon. They typically, I find to be more in California than Oregon, but they do, they are, in, I mean, it does happen in Oregon, just not as prevalent from my palate. Um, I would probably gravitate towards a different Willamette Valley Pinot for my personal taste, but if we're going to evaluate the wine as to what most people are going to think and is it well made, um, yes, yeah, matter of fact, the alcohol seems to have got calmed down now. I don't feel like it's like, <gasps> so that, again, that might've been just like a weird thing. The first like couple of sips, you know, getting the you know shock to the palate, um, going from from this to that. I don't know, but um, uh, I can see a lot of people liking this wine. So if what I described is stuff that you like in a Pinot Noir, especially from Oregon, then you totally should buy it. If it's you're like me, you're kind of like that's eh, all right. Then I would probably gravitate towards something else uh, that is more of my more of my liking, but. I'm still going to drink that thing, and I'm probably going to enjoy it. I have found that sometimes uh, when I drink these wines later, whether it's the next day or two or three or four days, especially when I corv and I can hold it for almost indefinitely, um, a lot of wines taste much better than I remember, and then there's also sometimes the wines don't taste better. And, I, and those wines usually are because they don't have like true normal corks in them, so the Corvin, while it does its job, if it's not a natural cork, it's not really sealing properly and, and there's still a little bit of seepage in there. Um, anyway, so let's move on to wine number three. Oh, great. I got all kinds of stuff underneath that. Woo! Is this the quicker picker upper? No, it's some generic paper towel. All right, wine number three. Bam. All right. This is the 2014, whew, I knew I had it on here somewhere, uh, Poderi Cola uh, Nebbiolo d'Alba from uh, the Drago DOC. And let's pull that wine up real quick. Nebbiolo d'Alba DOC. Um, in the Drago area of Piedmonte. Uh, it's 100% Nebbiolo. Uh, they say that the vines were planted in 67, 89, and 99. Uh, there's um, harvest is between the 1st and the 10th of October for this particular vintage. Um, let's see here. They did uh, maceration on the skins for 10 to 12 days. Um, let's see what else. And they uh, aged it in Slavonian oak for 12 months. Now, looking up the price point on this, um, I thought I had it over here somewhere. No. I think I can't, oh, here it is. Prices average about 20 bucks for the bottle. Um, and on the Psalm Select notes, I believe they called it a baby Barbaresco. So, um, it, the, I'll just read the notes. A deeper, darker baby Barolo that displays the woodsy, smoky, leathery personality of Piedmont's Nebbiolo grape. It may be more accurate to call this Nebbiolo from Cola a baby Barbaresco. However, it still hails from just side of the Barbaresco DOCG in the village of San Rocco Seno del Vio. Anyway... And then they go through the rest of the tasting notes, which we will not read, and so I don't prejudice myself to it. All righty. Let's hope I don't spill this one, right? So just as a, um, I think that was it on the capsule. Nope, we're good. So, recording this episode, because of how this wine bottle was positioned, I kept seeing this label actually reflected in the lens 
for the camera, just so you know. So when I put it back here, boom, I can see the, you see the face of the label. Just a little fun fact for you on that. So it's only a 14, but it's got that brown, and I know I got, this is all brown, but the others didn't look brown. You know, that's a white background. It's, it does, it has that brown, red quote brick which the court doesn't want us to use as a color but that red reddish brown color to it um classic italian color but it's only three years old so it's not like it's necessarily aged like looking at the color i would think this wine might be five or six or seven years older so so let's just get into it Oh yeah. Spice driven. Kind of a cinnamon red hot uh, thing going on here. Little touch of leather, not a whole lot. Little potpourri, little kind of uh, cherry bomb type of thing. Like you I can smell the alcohol. So it's kind of like, you know, um, almost a bourbon soaked cherry. Th those are the main aromas I get off of that. Remember that, ooh, it's got some tannins. It's got some alcohol. Okay, this has got to be decently alcoholic. Only 13.5. It feels hotter than that. It's okay. Um, this definitely is probably a wine that will taste better with food, um, especially with because of the tannin, because I'm, I'm definitely getting some good tannin off of it. You get some... Um, well marbled meat of some sort of cheeses it'll probably taste better but it does taste a little warm and granted these are these are all served at room temperature but that's how i well of course not this one but you know that's how i evaluate the wine because it's easier to evaluate everything because you know the aromas and the flavors are definitely much more present than if they're chilled um especially if you drink them at cellar temperature so it's okay I'd have to say that I prefer the Pinot Noir over this one, which is a lot for me to say that because typically I'm gonna I'm gonna love a Nebbiolo over almost most wines. You know, I was gonna say you remember I talked about this flavor and aroma that I get from California wines. It's kind of present in this one. That might be why it's a little bit of a turnoff for me. But I can say, now that I've done a couple tastes of it, well, it's not so bad, but there's like this candied raspberry, uh, candied cherry, almost a cherry sour going on, which I love cherry sour, so don't, don't want you to think it's I'm negative. It's not a negative, it's just that's what I get. Um, the cinnamon's there. Um, the, that... The, that Flavor and aroma that, that I kind of don't like is disappearing. But it's still present. <clears throat> and I think this is a wine that if I let it open up a little longer, 
it will calm down a little bit. Um, I'm getting used to the alcohol. I mean, I went from 12% to 13 and a half. And you would have thought I went from 14 to 15 just because of just how I felt the alcohol. Um, it's good, but I'd probably rather drink other Nebbiolos. Um, kind of bummed because the Thanksgiving wines were pretty good, especially that, especially that Gamay Pinot Noir blend. That was pretty darn good. It was my favorite of the six. Um, the champagne, I love the champagne. Um, it's hard to not like champagne, but this is like, like better than most that I've had. Um, I like this the next best, and then I like this the least. And it's not, it's not a bad wine. I just, I don't know. I'm just kind of hoping for maybe a little bit better. Let's, you know, let's let's pour a little more. Let's see, you know, if uh, maybe give another shot. It's kind of like how sometimes you know the first when, as soon as you open a bottle, especially a, a screw cap. Sometimes the first pour isn't the best. So let's, let's check it out. Let's see, you know, let's give it another shot. It's not a bad wine by any means. And there's a lot of people who are going to like this wine. It's only 20 bucks. So that's a really good deal, man. I mean, it's not a Barbaresco for $20 or a Barolo for $20. Um, but it's still $20 Nebbiolo. It's pretty good, man, for that. When you look at that price. It's kind of growing on me. I mean, I like it. I think I was expecting something a little bit different. And that might, might be more my expectations in my head weren't matching what the quality of the wine was. I wasn't expecting some $100 Barolo. Trust me, I wasn't. But I've had some Nebbiolos from outside of Barbaresco and Barolo that I just liked better. It's good, but not to my liking. Do you like that style? Um, basically a baby Barbaresco, but how I described it. Then you're going to like the wine. If you're like me, you're going to be like, yeah, I'd rather drink something else. All right, so we are going to wrap up the wines here. Um, as always, click the links above to friend me up. Click the links below uh, to find out more about these wonderful, well, they're all wonderful wines, but I like this one the best. Um, and also put a link to Psalm Select, who, um, you know, I really enjoy almost all the wines they, they send me. So, you know, it can't all, they can't all be home runs, but you know, it's, it's going to be a good wine. Like, like I said, this one, I'm probably going to like, I'm probably going to probably like this one better once I actually uncork it and pour it out and let it sit out and, you know, let it breathe a little bit. It's probably going to become better and I have food with it. It'll probably be better too. Um, anyway, click the links below to, uh, Find out more about the wines and psalms. So I hit the PayPal button over there to send me a few ducats. And um, there's a Christmas tree. I didn't have it up for Thanksgiving. We didn't have it up yet. So that's why I did the kitchen table that day. And um, stay tuned for the New Year's Eve episode where we'll have more sparkling wines. Quite a wide variety. Well, only three, but wide range of pricing um, on that. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.